Hey friends, Diana here. Uh, I'm gonna talk today a little bit about style and authenticity, specifically when it comes to learning different styles of music. So I have a classical background. That's the tradition I learned in. I learned in my school programs and then went on to get a classical performance degree. But that means that those of us who have come from that tradition are gonna have the tendency when we're learning other types of music or stepping out of the orchestral world, we have a tendency to sound like classical players trying to play something else. And that's where this idea of authenticity comes in because we don't have to sound like that, but it does take some very careful listening and, and thinking hard about how your hands are approaching your instrument and the sounds that you're creating to be able to sound a little bit more authentic. So I have come up with some theories. I've done some traveling. I, um, I make my, my living as a fiddle player now, but I am an American fiddle player, so I don't claim to be real authentic to any one of the traditional styles from other countries. I feel like I kind of represent the melting pot. Um, but I also uh, have done some traveling, and because I learned the fiddle styles later in life, I didn't come from, the, come from a background in them, and I also didn't have one that I, I took real specific focus in. So I've kind of learned them all at once, which I think has given me this opportunity to kind of um, co contrast them and figure out what makes them different and how they're similar and how to maybe turn on and off certain styles so that you can, you can immerse yourself in an Irish session, for example, or in a bluegrass jam. So, this is a disproven theory, or I guess it's as proven as it can be, because I, I have traveled around to several countries and I have this theory that I'm gonna to introduce today that um, someday I'll write my doctoral thesis on. But my idea, and one of the things that my, my ear training has taught me and kind of immersing myself in all these styles, is that the fiddle style sounds like the language or the accent of a particular region or country. And so, some examples. Now I have to say, I've been working on the accents, but I don't mean to offend anybody. I'm not very good at them. Okay, they're really just meant to prove prove the idea, you know, get the concept across. Okay, so my first example, the Irish. The Irish have a very lyrical way of talking. Their phrases go up and down and they roll their R's. I love the Irish language. It's beautiful. So here would be an Irish tune played like a classical player attempting to play an Irish tune. Big bows, vibrato, you know, the whole thing. So if we add that, that roll of the R, that Irish trill, we add the lyricism, kind of the lilting back and forth back in, here's how I would make this sound a little bit more authentic. All right, you heard the difference. So another accent that I, find wonderful and a country that I visited recently is Scotland. So the Scottish have a very throaty accent, almost like they've got an egg in the back of their throat. Sorry to my Scottish friends, but it is a little bit more aggressive. It's a little throatier, it's a little beefier, if you will. Um, and so the Scottish strass phase, I think it kind of, it, it translates in how the bow approaches the strings. It's just a little bit, it's a little rougher. All right, last example. I recently moved to Nashville, Tennessee, where they really do talk like this. And again, Nashville friends, I love you dearly. I think your accent is beautiful. Um, and it's charming and wonderful. But uh, bluegrass and country comes from the Southern United States. And you wouldn't necessarily find those Irish trills or that, that really delicate lilting melody like you would in Irish music. It's derivative of that, but it's almost like it's been adapted based on what everybody was hearing in the language around them. So if the Southern accent's very slippery and tends to slide around and people tend to scoop into their words, I really think that that's represented in the fiddle style. So if we take a bluegrass tune and we play it like a classical player, here's a snapshot, here's what we get. Same 
too, except I'm gonna add some double stops and some slides and pick up the tempo. Here's what we get. So I should point out also that this is all a product of lots and lots and lots of listening and thinking and traveling, but you don't necessarily have to do the traveling part. If you're really encouraged to play a particular style and something's calling to you, just immerse yourself in it. Listen, 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 go to the Irish sessions, go to the bluegrass night downtown and, and do what you can to just infiltrate your ear. Tons of Spotify and iTunes and YouTube videos, just before you even take it to your instrument, do whatever you can to be listening as much as possible. And I guarantee that the authenticity will start to kind of, kind of start to come out in your playing. And then the rest of it is truly mimicry. It's listening to what you hear and figuring out how to make small adjustments on your instrument to be able to make it happen. And again, I don't claim to be a super authentic to any one of these genres, but I have been able to hear the difference and have thought about really carefully about how that, um, translates in our playing. So I hope this was helpful. Please send any comments or questions my way. You know, I could talk for days about this. So I would, uh, I'd love to help you on your journey. Thanks everybody.